Okay, and finally, let's try the ube. Oh my god. Oh my god. Today, we're going to be making three very colorful and unique combinations of Spanish bread. So traditionally, Spanish bread is a sweet bread from the Philippines that's been filled with brown sugar and butter and then dusted with breadcrumbs. But today, we're going to have a little bit of fun with the Spanish bread. I haven't found Spanish bread flavors yet that have these types of flavor combinations, so join me and let's make it together! Welcome to Janelle Eats, where you can taste the flavors of the world in your kitchen. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that bell so that you don't miss out on these num nums that we make on this channel every week. Hit that like button too while you're at it if you want me to continue making recipes with all these fun flavors. Let's get started. By the way, all the ingredients will be in the description below for your reference. So I'm gonna be using my KitchenAid stand mixer and I'm gonna be using the dough hook attachment since we're making bread. If you don't have a stand mixer, that's fine. You can totally do this by hand, but the stand mixer makes it so much easier because this dough's a little sticky. So I'll put a link in the description below if you wanna get your own. Start with two teaspoons of instant yeast or two and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. If you're using active dry yeast, make sure that you bloom it in warm milk or water first before you add it. Not scorching hot, okay, because that will kill your yeast. Next, dump in four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. You can also use bread flour if you'd like or a combination of both. Just keep in mind that bread flour tends to soak up a little bit more liquid compared to all-purpose flour. After that, add one third cup of white granulated sugar and then follow it up with one and one half teaspoons of kosher salt. You can also use normal kitchen salt, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you don't hit your yeast with a pile of salt. That's why I put the yeast at the bottom because apparently the salt will kill the yeast if it makes direct contact. Now mix this all up. Now you can get fancy like me and use the dough hook attachment or you can just use your hands. I mean, regardless, your hands are gonna end up getting pretty messy. <laughs> it's a bread recipe. Alrighty, follow it up with two large eggs. Now I crack the eggs directly into the flour and I know people say to mix all the liquid ingredients first and then add it into the dry ingredients, but I've found that it doesn't matter. So then just mix that all up until it's fully integrated into the flour and then we're gonna slowly add our milk. So depending on the flour that you're using, you may need to add a little bit more or a little bit less than what I added here. So you're gonna slowly add the milk just until it's picked up all the dry flour at the bottom of the bowl and then you just add a splash more. So I ended up using one and one fourth cup of warm milk. Oh, and make sure that your milk is not too hot. If it's too hot, it's gonna kill your yeast. Okay, so after I mix it, check it out. This dough is a little bit wetter than other doughs, which I like because it makes for a fluffier and lighter Spanish bread. Now, if you're a beginner baker and sticky dough freaks you out, then maybe hold back on the milk a little bit so that your dough is gonna be a lot easier to work with. But I'm a daredevil, so I'm gonna keep my dough sticky. And then after that, add three tablespoons of room temperature butter. So at this point, you're just gonna let the stand mixer do its thing and knead your dough. So for me, I've been baking a lot of bread, so I know that it typically is done kneading at around five to seven minutes on speed four on my KitchenAid. So that's about like a medium speed. But you, you need to check your dough frequently to make sure that you don't over knead it. It is so easy to over knead your dough using a stand mixer and you're gonna check to see if your dough is ready by doing the window pane test, which I will show you now. Okay, so your dough is done kneading when you stretch it out and it kind of forms this like translucent film. So it's kind of like the window pane. If your dough tears before it can create that translucent window pane thing, then it probably needs to be kneaded for a few more minutes. So just keep kneading and then check again to see if it forms a window pane. Okay, so my dough definitely passes the window pane test. Look how stretchy it is. And it is sticky as expected. If you can't handle the stickiness, it's okay to add just a little bit more flour to make it more workable for you. Okay, so now I'm just gonna bust out my scale because I wanna split my dough into three equal parts. 
You can just eyeball this part if you want, but if you want to be more accurate, then go ahead and use a scale. So ideally, you'd want to add your extract probably right after you add your milk to your flour. But since we want to make three different flavors from one big old hunk of dough, adding it at this stage is really not going to be that much of a problem. Okay, so I got my three doughs split up into three different bowls. For the first dough, I'm going to add one half teaspoon of ube extract. I use a specific type of ube extract that I prefer, so I'm gonna go ahead and link that in the description below. And then just mix this well until the ube extract has fully integrated into the dough. Make sure you scrape the bottom of the bowl too because there might be some white pieces of dough down there that'll be left behind. If you're doing this by hand, I recommend wearing gloves unless you want purple Barney hands. Okay, so this is good enough. Now just transfer it into a separate bowl and then cover it with either plastic wrap or you can use these disposable hair caps like I do. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse my bowl and my dough hook and we're gonna make the pandan dough next. You don't have to rinse your bowl, but if you don't, then you're gonna get purple streaks in your pandan. So if you're into that, go ahead. So same thing, add one half teaspoon of the pandan extract into your dough, mix it well until your whole dough is green and then set it aside into another bowl and cover it with plastic wrap or you can cover it in an airtight container. I just happen to have this lid that comes with my KitchenAid bowl. Okay, and finally, I've got my plain base dough and I'm just gonna cover this with plastic wrap. And then these guys are just gonna chill out in room temperature until they double in size. This might take you about 45 minutes to an hour depending on how hot it is in your room. So I'll see you then. All right, now all of them have definitely doubled in size. So we're gonna work with a pandan dough first. So since my dough is sticky, I'm gonna add some flour on top of my work surface, and then I'm gonna dust the top of the dough with even more flour, because this thing is pretty sticky. So at this point, you wanna punch out all the air bubbles that are in your dough, and this is gonna naturally happen when we flatten out our dough using a rolling pin. You can also flatten it using your hands, just shape it into a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect, just do your best. So at this point, you can either cut the dough and then spread the filling on it, or you can spread the filling on it first and then slice up the dough. Either way works, I ended up doing both for these guys. So this rectangle, I cut it into five equal pieces and then I used a ruler for it. Do you like my freebie neon orange ruler? Okay, and then you can really just get creative with this and fill it with anything you want. But before this video was created, I was like mapping it out and I decided to put in red bean. For the red bean paste, I used this packet, which I'll put a link in the description below. You can definitely make your own at home, but if you're lazy like me, this packet makes your life so much easier. Oh my gosh, so I love red bean buns, but if you're not into that, let me know in the comments below what you would fill this Spanish bread with. So yeah, just spread it all over your dough. Depending on how much you want, the measurements will vary. I ended up using half of this 500 gram packet. When you are spreading it though, make sure you leave a little bit of space around the edges so that you can pinch your Spanish bread closed after you roll it up. Okay, so once you're happy with your filling, let's roll it up. I ended up having to use this bench scraper to help me lift the dough off the work surface since my dough is pretty sticky. It helps a lot with getting my dough off of the work surface. And by the way, if you can't tell, I'm totally not a perfectionist when it comes to making stuff in my kitchen. So just roll it up the best you can. This looks fine. Pinch the end closed to seal the dough and then we're gonna coat it in breadcrumbs. So this part is optional, but since it's signature for Spanish bread to be coated in breadcrumbs, we're gonna do it. So I use these sweet crackers. These are Hawaiian cream crackers. You can use any other kind of sweet cracker or biscuit that you have at home. These taste way better compared to using normal breadcrumbs to coat your sweet breads with. So I just blitz this up in a blender until it's fully crushed up and then I pour it into a container and then I coat each of my rolled up Spanish bread doughs with it. The breadcrumbs also help a lot if the dough is sticking to your hands. So yeah, just keep repeating the same process for the remaining pieces of dough. Roll it up, coat it in breadcrumbs, and then repeat. I also try to stretch the dough a little bit lengthwise so it looks a little bit more like Spanish bread, but if you end up having like poofy round rolls, that's fine, they're still gonna taste really good. So once they're rolled up, place them on a parchment paper lined baking sheet. 
By the way, you're gonna need two of these parchment paper lined baking sheets to fit all your breads in, so make sure you get those ready. All right, now you're done, make sure you scrape off any of the pandan dough bits that are left over on your work surface because next, we're gonna be working with the ube dough. Oh, it got so poofy that it stuck to my shower cap. Boo! Now I have to throw this away. Boo! Okay, so same thing as a pandan one. Flour on your work surface, dump out the dough, add more flour on top, and then roll it out into a rectangle. Whatever are we gonna fill this ube Spanish bread with? After much debating on my end, I decided to make ube cinnamon roll Spanish bread! So to do that, I combine about one tablespoon plus two teaspoons of room temperature butter, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and two tablespoons of dark brown sugar in a bowl. So mix this up really well, and then we're just gonna spread it all over the dough as evenly as possible. Remember to keep the sides clear of filling so that we can roll up our dough and pinch it closed. Then we cut it into the five equal pieces. I actually like this method a lot better compared to the last one, so we're gonna do the same thing with our last batch of Spanish bread. So yeah, just repeat the same thing like we did for the pandando. Roll up, pinch, cover in breadcrumbs, and place in your parchment paper lined baking tray. Repeat, repeat! By the way, we're gonna drizzle some icing on top of this bread after it bakes. So hang tight, I'm gonna show you how we do that after these guys go in the oven. Alrighty, last but not least, we got our plain old Spanish dough base. Don't worry, we're gonna jazz it up with the filling. So repeat the same steps that you were doing like you did for the last two pieces of dough to prep this for the filling. But this time, we're gonna fill it with this. This is ube jam, AKA ube halaya, and it has these sweet, soft coconut strings that are blended in with it called makapuno. Okay, pretend you're giving the dough a facial and spread it all over. And you know the drill. Roll, 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 pinch, 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 coat, coat, coat. And we're finally done, oh my god. So we actually have to let this rise a second time so that these breads are nice and fluffy after you bake them. Trust me, the wait is so worth it. Cover it with a large, unscented plastic bag. I use clean trash bags, or you can use a bunch of plastic wrap. Just make sure you give the dough a lot of room at the top so that they can rise. So now just let it rise. This part only took me about 45 minutes since it was pretty hot in the house, but no matter the temperature in your house, I'll show you the poke test to know when your bread is ready to bake. And I'll show you the poke test after my doughs have risen. Okay, they have risen. Some of these look kind of funny, but guess what? They're still gonna be really good. All right, this is the poke test. Poke. Once you poke the dough and it springs back halfway, then that means it's ready to bake. If you poke the dough and it springs back all the way, then it still needs a few minutes for it to rise. If you poke your dough and it doesn't spring back at all, then that means you've overproofed it, which means that it might deflate in the oven. But that's fine, just stick it in the oven anyway. So these guys are gonna bake together in a preheated 350 degree Fahrenheit or 175 degrees Celsius oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until the tops are golden brown. Uh, you might wanna look at the plain Spanish bread dough to see if the top is golden brown because it's kind of hard to tell with the ube and the pandan ones. All right, now we just gotta wait for it to bake. So while that's baking, we're gonna make the simple icing for the ube cinnamon roll Spanish bread. In a bowl, just mix together one half cup of confectioner's sugar, AKA icing sugar, one fourth teaspoon of vanilla extract, and one tablespoon of milk. Then just mix very well until all the clumps are gone. All right, that's it. We just gotta wait for the breads to bake and then cool down. Now I know it's tempting, but wait at least 10 minutes for these guys to cool down. Ooh, okay, so which one should I try first? 
Let's see, let's see. Hmm. Let's do the pandan one. I like it where there's thinner swirls of red bean with a pandan. If you want more of like a balanced pandan and red bean flavor, if you get a glob of red bean like I did right there, you taste mostly red bean. So really up to you what you want more flavor of. So you can have like a very thin layer of red bean or you can have like a thicker glob, totally up to you. All right, so I'm gonna try the plain one with the ube. So it's ube jam with makapuno strings, which is the, these coconut strings that are really soft and chewy. Okay, so it tastes just like pande ube. If you've never had it, pande ube is like, like a sweet bread with just the ube jam inside, the ube halaya. But yeah, this one's pretty like, I guess pretty classic. I've had it like ever since I was a kid in the Philippines, so solid. Okay, and finally, let's try the ube cinnamon roll. Oh my god. Oh my god. Right when I bit into it, I just smell the cinnamon roll and it's, oh, it's good. So yeah, if you like cinnamon rolls, you'll like this. It's basically like a light cinnamon roll. If you want thicker icing, like I said, you can add more to it. But if you want just like a light snack, like with your coffee or tea, this is good enough. Wow, well that's it guys. This is actually really fun to make, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments below if you tried it at home and if you decided to get creative with the flavors. I really wanna find out what else you guys can do to these Spanish breads. Okay, so like I said, make sure you don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so that you get notified of every video that I make on this channel. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye!